All the people with the backwards attitude. Born in fingers. And that's a bad excuse for sitting on your ass when you get paid. Caesar was chosen consul for the fourth time and went into Spain to make war with the sons of Pompey, who were very young. The greatest battle fought between them in this civil war was here, at Munda, and they put Caesar himself in great danger of his life. He slew 30,000 of them in the field and lost of his own men 1,000 of the best he had. This was the last war that Caesar made. And on his return to Rome, the people named him Perpetual Dictator. Safe conscience. 
which is indeed, sir, a mender of bad soul. <laughs> Thou art a cobbler, art thou? Oh, I am indeed a surgeon to old shoes. <laughs> and when they be in great danger, I recover them. <laughs> but what art not in thy shop today? Why dost thou lead these men about the streets? Oh, truly, sir, to wear out their shoes to get myself into more work. <laughs> oh, but indeed, sir, we make a holiday to see Caesar. And we rejoice at his triumph! <laughs> Wherefore rejoice? What conquest brings he home? What tributaries follow him to Rome? To grace and captive bonds his chariot wheels? You blocks! You stones! You worse than senseless things! Oh, you hard hearts! You cruel men of Rome! Knew you not Pompey? Many a time and oft have you climbed up walls, to battlements, and towers, to windows, high and chimney tops, to see great Pompey pass the streets of Rome. And do you now cull out a holiday? And do you now strew flowers in his way, who comes in triumph over Pompey's blood? Be gone. Run to your houses. Fall upon your knees. Pray to the gods to intermit the plague that needs must light on this ingratitude. directly in Antonius' way when he doth run his course. Antonius! Caesar, my lord. Forget not in your speed, Antonius, to touch Calpurnia. For our elders say, the barren touch it in this holy chase, shake off their sterile curse. I shall remember. When Caesar says, do this, it is performed. Set on and leave no ceremony out. <laughs> Called. Let every noise be still. Peace yet again. Who is it in the press that calls on me? I hear a voice shriller than all the music. Cry, Caesar. Speak. Caesar is turned to hear. Beware the eyes of March. Beware the eyes of March. What man is that? A soothsayer bids you beware the Ides of March. Set him before me. Let me see his face. Fellow, come from the throng. Look upon Caesar. What sayest thou to me now? Speak once again. Beware the Ides of March. He is a dreamer. Let us leave him. Pass. <laughs> Will you go see the order of the course? Not I. I pray you do. I am not gamesome. I do lack some of that quick spirit that is in Antony. <laughs> Let me not hinder Cassius your desires. I'll leave you. Brutus. I do observe you now of late. I have not from your eyes that gentleness and show of love as I was wont to have. You bear too stubborn and too strange a hand over your friend that loves you. Tell me, good Brutus, can you see your face? 
No, Cassius, for the eye sees not itself, but by reflection. I have heard where many of the best respect in Rome, except immortal Caesar. Speaking of Brutus and groaning underneath this age's yoke, I've wished that noble Brutus had his eyes. Into what dangers would you lead me, Cassius, that you would have me seek into myself for that which is not in me? What means this shouting? I do fear the people choose Caesar for their king. I do you fear it? And must I think you would not have it so? I would not, Cassius. Yet I love him well. I cannot tell what you and other men think of this life. But for my single self, I had as lief not be as lief to be in awe of such a thing as I myself. I was born free as Caesar, so were you. We both are fed as well, and we can both endure the winter's cold as well as he. Man is now become a god. And Cassius is a wretched creature that must bend his body if Caesar carelessly, but not on him. He had a fever when he was in Spain. And when the fit was on him, I did note how he did shake. It is true, this god did shake. His coward lips did from their color fly. Aye, and that tongue of his that bade the Romans mark him and write his speeches in their books. Alas, it cried, give me some drink, Titinius. As a sick girl. Ye gods, it doth amaze me. A man of such a feeble temper should so get the start of the majestic world and bear the palm alone. Another general shout. I do believe that these applauses are for some new honors that are heaped on Caesar. My man, he doth bestride the narrow world like a colossus. And we, petty men, walk under his huge legs and peep about to find ourselves dishonorable graves. Men, at some time, are masters of their fates. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves that we are underlings. Brutus and Caesar. What should be in that, Caesar? Why should that name be sounded more than yours? Write them together. Yours is as fair a name. Sound them. It doth become the mouth as well. Weigh them, it is as heavy. Conjure with them. Brutus will start a spirit as soon as Caesar. Now, in the names of all the gods at once, upon what meat doth this our Caesar feed? That he has grown so gross. Age thou art shamed. When went there by an age, since the great flood, when they could say, till now, that talked of Rome, that her wide walls encompass but one man? What you have said, I will consider. What you have to say, I will with patience hear, and find a time both meet to hear and answer such high things. Till then, my noble friend, you upon this. 
Brutus had rather be a villager than to repute himself a son of Rome under these hard conditions, as this time is like to lay upon us. I am glad that my weak words have struck but thus much show of fire from Brutus. But look you, Cassius. The angry spot doth glow on Caesar's brow, and all the rest look like a chidden train. Calpurnia's cheek is pale, and Cicero looks with such ferret and such fiery eyes as we have seen him in the Capitol being crossed in conference by some senators. Antonius. Caesar. Let me have men about me that are fat, sleek-headed men in such a sleep o' nights. Yon Cassius has a lean and hungry look. He thinks too much. Such men are dangerous. Casca will tell us what the matter is. It's not dangerous. He's a noble Roman and well given. Would he were fatter? But I fear him not. Yet if my name were liable to fear, I do not know the man I should avoid so soon as that spare Cassius. He reads much. He is a great observer. And he sees quite through the deeds of men. He loves no plays as thou dost, Antony. He hears no music. Such men as he are never at heart's ease when they behold a greater than themselves. And therefore is he very dangerous. I rather tell thee what is to be feared than what I fear. For always I am Caesar. Come on my right hand, for this here is death. And tell me truly what thou thinkst of him. Casca. Would you speak with me? Aye, Casca. Tell us what has chanced today that Caesar seems so sad. Why, there was a crown offered him. And being offered him, he put it by with the back of his hand. Thus. What was the second noise for? Why, for that too. They shouted thrice. What was the last cry for? Why, for that too. Was the crown offered him thrice? Aye, merry was it. And he put it by thrice. Every time, gentler than other. And at every putting by, mine honest neighbors shouted. Who offered him the crown? Why, Antony. Tell us the manner of it, gentle Casper. I can as well be hanged as tell the manner of it. It was mere foolery I did not mark it. I saw Mark Antony offered him a crown. Yet it was not a crown, neither it was one of these coronets. And as I told you, he put it by once. But for all that, to my thinking, he would fain have had it. And then he offered it to him again, and he put it by again. But to my thinking, he was very loath to lay his fingers off it. And then he offered it the third time. He put it the third time by, and still, as he refused it, the rabble men hooted and clapped their chopped hands and threw up their sweaty nightcaps and uttered such a deal of stinking breath because Caesar refused the crown that it had almost choked Caesar. But he swooned and fell down at it. But soft, I pray you. What, did Caesar swoon? He fell down in the marketplace and foamed at mouth and was speechless. Tis very like he hath the falling sickness. Mm. Caesar hath it not. But you and I, an honest casker, we have the falling sickness. I know not what you mean by that. But before he fell down, when he perceived the common herd was glad he refused the crown, he offered them his throat to cut. And so he fell. And three or four wenches where I stood cried, Alas, good soul, and forgave him with all their hearts. There's no heed to be taken of them. If Caesar had stabbed their mothers, they would have done no less. And after that, he came thus sad away? Aye. Did Cicero say anything? Aye. He spoke Greek. Huh? To what effect? It was Greek to me. I could tell you more news, too. Morales and Pladius for tearing scarves off Caesar's images are put to silence. Very well. Ah, there was more foolery yet. If I could remember it. Will you sup with me tonight, Casca? No, I am promised for. Will you dine with me tomorrow? Aye, if I be alive and your mind whole, then your dinner worth the eating. Good. 
I will expect you. Do so. Farewell. Both. Till then, think of the world. And after this, let Caesar seat him sure. Or we will shake him. Or worse days endure. <laughs> that have known the earth so full of faults. Now could I, Casca, name to thee a man most like this dreadful night? A man no mightier than thyself or me in personal action. Yet prodigious groan. And fearful as these strange eruptions are, It is Caesar that you mean. Is it not Cassius? Let it be who it is. Indeed, they say the senators tomorrow mean to establish Caesar as a king. And he shall wear his crown by sea and land, in every place, save here in Italy. I know where I will wear this dagger then. Cassius from bondage will deliver Cassius. If I know this, no, all the world besides that part of tyranny that I do bear, I can shake off at pleasure. So can I. So every bondman in his own hand bears the power to cancel his captivity. And why should Caesar be a tyrant then? What trash is Rome? What rubbish and what awful? when it serves for the base matter to illuminate so vile a thing as Caesar. But, O oh grief, where hast thou led me? I perhaps speak this before a willing bondman. You speak to Casca, and to such a man that is no fleering telltale. Hold. My hand. Be factious for redress of all these griefs. And I will set this foot of mine as far as who goes farthest. There's a bargain made. No, no, you, Casca. I have moved already some certain of the noblest-minded Romans to undergo with me an enterprise of honorable, dangerous consequence. Stand close a while. Here comes one in haste. It is Sinner. I know him by his gate. He is a friend. Sinner? Where well, haste you, sir? To find out you. Who's that? Tell us, Simba? No, it is Casca. One incorporate to our tents. I'm glad of it. What a fearful night is this. As two or three of us have seen strange sights. Am I not stayed for? Tell me. Yes, you are. Oh, Cassius, if you could but win the noble Brutus to our party, are you content? Good, Sinner. Take this paper and look, you lay it in the Praetor's chair where Brutus may but find it. Throw this in at his window. Set this up with wax upon old Brutus' statue. All this done, repair to Pompey's porch. Yeah. I will hide. And so bestow these papers as you bid me. Do so. Come, Casca. You and I will yet our day see Brutus at his house. Three parts of him is ours already. And the man in 
Flying tire upon the next encounter yields him ours. It must be by his death. And for my part, I know no personal cause to spurn at him. He would be crowned. How that might change his nature, there's the question. It is the bright day that brings forth the adder. And that craves wary walking. The taper burneth in your closet, sir. Searching the window for a flint, I found this paper thus sealed up. I'm sure it did not light there when I went to bed. We'll get thee to bed again. It is not day. It is not tomorrow, boy, the Ides of March? I know not, sir. Brutus, thou sleepst. Awake and see thyself. Shall Rome stand under one man's all? What? Rome? Speak. Strike. Redress. O Rome, I make thee promise. Thou shalt receive thy full petition at the hand of Brutus. They are the faction. O oh, conspiracy. I think we have to bold upon your rest, good morrow, Brutus. Do we trouble you? I have been up this hour awake all night. Know I these men that come along with you? Yes, every man of them. And no man here but honors you. And every one doth wish you had but that opinion of yourself which every noble Roman bears of you. This is Tribernius. He is welcome hither. This Decius Brutus. He is welcome too. This Casca. This Sinner. And this Metellus Simba. They are all welcome. Uh, shall I entreat a word? Is the east. Doth not the day break here? No. no. Pardon, sir, it doth. Yon gay lines that fret the clouds and messengers of day. You shall confess that you are both deceived. Here, as I point my sword, the sun arises. Give me your hands all over, one by one. And let us swear our resolution. No, not an oath. What need we any spur but our own cause to prick us to redress? What other bond than secret Romans that have spoke the word and will not falter? And what other oath than honesty to honesty engaged that this shall be? Or we will fall for it. Shall no man else be touched, but only Caesar? Decius, well urged. I think it is not meet Mark Antony, so well beloved of Caesar, should outlive Caesar. We shall find of him a shrewd contriver. Let Antony and Caesar fall together. Our course will seem too bloody, Caius Cassius, to cut the head off and then hack the limbs like wrath in death and envy afterwards. For Antony is but a limb of Caesar. Let's be sacrificers, but not butchers, Caius. We all stand up against the spirit of Caesar. And in the spirit of men, there is no blood. Oh, that we then could come by Caesar's spirit and not dismember Caesar. But alas, Caesar must bleed for it. 
And gentle friends, let's kill him boldly, but not wrathfully. Let's carve him as a dish fit for the gods, not hew him as a carcass fit for hounds. And for Mark Antony, think not of him, for he can do no more than Caesar's arm when Caesar's head is off. Yet I fear him, for in the engrafted love he bears to Caesar... Alas, good Cassius, do not think of him. If he loves Caesar, all that he can do is to himself, take thought and die for Caesar. And that were much he should, for he is given to sports, to wildness, and much company. <laughs> but it is doubtful yet whether Caesar will come forth today or no, for he is superstitious grown of late. Maybe these apparent prodigies, the unaccustomed terror of this night, and the persuasion of his augurers <laughs> may hold him from the capital today. Never fear that. If he be so resolved, I can or sway him. For he loves to hear that unicorns may be betrayed with trees, and bears with glasses, elephants with holes, lions with toils, and men with flatterers. But when I tell him he hates flatterers, he says he does, being then most flattered. Let me work, or I can give his humor the true bent, and I will bring him to the capital. The morning comes upon us, we'll leave you, Brutus. And friends, disperse yourselves, but all remember what you have said, and show yourselves true rulers. what mean you? Wherefore rise you now? It is not for your health thus to commit your weak condition to the raw, cold morning. Not for yours, neither. You have ungently brought a stove from my bed. Dear my lord, make me acquainted with your cause of grief. I am not well in health, and that is all. Brutus is wise. And were he not in health, he would embrace the means to come by it. Why, so I do. Good Portia, go to bed. Is Brutus sick? And is it physical to walk unbraced and suck up the humors of the dank morning? What, is Brutus sick? Will he steal out of his wholesome bed to dare the vile contagion of the night and tempt the roomy and unpurged air to add unto his sickness? No, my Brutus. You have some sick offense within your mind, which by the right and virtue of my place I ought to know of. And upon my knees I charm you by my once commended beauty, by all your vows of love, and that great vow which did incorporate and make us one, that you unfold to me, yourself, your half, why you are heavy, and what men tonight have had resort to you. For here have been some six or seven who did hide their faces even from darkness. Kneel not, gentle Portia. I should not need if you were gentle, Brutus. Within the bond of marriage, tell me, Brutus, is it accepted I should know no secrets that appertain to you? Am I your wife, but as it were in sort or limitation, to keep with you at meals, comfort your bed, talk to you sometimes? Dwell I but in the suburbs of your good pleasure? If it be no more, Portia is Brutus Harlot, not his wife. You are my true and honorable wife, as dear to me as are the ruddy drops that visit my sad heart. If this were true, then I should know the secret. I grant I am a woman, but with all a woman, Lord Brutus took to wife. I grant I am a woman, but with all a woman well reputed, Cato's daughter. Think you I am no stronger than my sex, being so fathered and so husbanded. Tell me your counsels. I will not disclose them. 
I have made strong proof of my constancy. Will ye gods render me worthy of this noble wife? By and by thy bosom shall partake the secrets of my heart. Heaven nor earth have been at peace tonight. Thrice hath Calpurnia in her sleep cried out, Help ho, they murder Caesar. Who's within? My lord. Go bid the priests do present sacrifice and bring me that opinion of success. I will, my lord. What mean you, Caesar? Think you to walk for? You shall not stir out of your house today. Caesar shall forth. The things that threaten me ne'er look but on my back. When they shall see the face of Caesar, they are vanished. Caesar, I never stood on ceremonies. Yet now they fright me. There is one within. Besides the thing that we have heard and seen, recounts most horrid sights seen by the watch. Lioness hath welted in the streets, and graves have yawned and yielded up their dead. Fierce, fiery warriors fought upon the clouds in ranks and squadrons and right form of war, which drizzled blood upon the capital. The noise of battle hurtled in the air. Horses did neigh, and dying men did groan, and ghosts did shriek and squeal about the streets. Oh, Caesar, these things are beyond all use, and I do fear them. What can be avoided whose end is purposed by the mighty gods? Yet Caesar shall go forth, for these predictions out of the world in general as to Caesar. When beggars die, there are no comets seen. The heavens themselves blaze forth the death of princes. Cowards die many times before their deaths. The valiant never taste of death but once. Of all the wonders that I yet have heard, it seems to me most strange that men should fear. Seeing that death, a necessary end, will come when it will come. What say the augurers? They would not have you to stir forth today. Plucking the entrails of an offering forth, they could not find a heart within the beast. The gods do this in shame of cowardice. Caesar should be a beast without a heart if he should stay away today through fear. No, Caesar shall not. Danger knows full well that Caesar is more dangerous than he. We are two lions littered in one day, and I, the elder, and more terrible. Caesar shall go forth. Alas, my lord, your wisdom is consumed in confidence. 
Do not go forth today. Call it my fear that keeps you in the house, and not your own. We'll send Mark Anthony to the Senate House, and he shall say you are not well today. Let me upon my knee prevail in this. Mark Anthony shall say I am not well. And for thy humor, I will stay at home. Here's Decius Brutus, he shall tell them so. Caesar, all hail. Good morrow, worthy Caesar. I come to fetch you to the Senate House. And you are come in very happy time to bear my greetings to the senators and tell them that I will not come today. Cannot is false, and that I dare not, falser. I will not come today. Tell them so, Decius. Say he is sick. Shall Caesar send a lie? Have I in conquest stretched mine arm so far to be a fear to tell greybeards the truth? Decius, go tell them Caesar will not come. Most mighty Caesar, let me know some cause lest I be laughed at when I tell them so. The cause is in my will. I will not come. That is enough to satisfy the Senate. But for your private satisfaction, because I love you, I will let you know Calpurnia here, my wife, stays me at home. She dreamed tonight she saw my statue, which like a fountain with an hundred spouts did run pure blood. Many lusty Romans came smiling and did bathe their hands in it. And this does she apply for warnings and portents and evils imminent. And on her knee hath begged that I will stay at home today. This dream is all a misinterpreted. It was a vision fair and fortunate. Your statue spouting blood in many pipes, in which so many smiling Romans bathed, signifies that from you great Rome shall suck reviving blood, and that great men shall press for tinctures, stains, relics, and cognizance. This, by Calpurnia's dream, is signified. In this way, have you well expounded it? I have. When you have heard what I can say. And know it now. The Senate have concluded to give this day a crown to mighty Caesar. If you shall send them word you will not come, their minds may change. Besides, it were a mock apt to be rendered for someone to say, break up the Senate till another time when Caesar's wife shall meet with better dreams. If Caesar hide himself, shall they not whisper, lo, Caesar is afraid. How foolish do your fears seem now, Calpurnia. I am ashamed I did yield to them. Give me my robe, for I will go. And look where Publius has come to fetch me. Good morrow, Caesar. For Brutus, you stirred so early too. Good morrow, Casca. Our sinner, for Metellus. Now to Bonius. See, Antony, that rebels long o' nights is notwithstanding up. <laughs> Good morrow, Antony. Good morrow, noble Caesar. Good friends, go in and taste some wine with me. We, like friends, will straightway go together. Caesar, beware of Brutus. Take heed of Cassius. Come not near Casca. Have an eye to Sinner. Trust not to Bonius. Mark well Metellus Simba. Decius Brutus loves thee not. <laughs> the Ides of March are come. I see, sir. But not gone. At your best leisure, this his humble suit. Who oh, Caesar, read mine first, for my suit touches Caesar nearer. Read it, great Caesar. What touches us ourselves shall be last served. Delay not, Caesar. 
Read it instantly. What, is the fellow mad? But urge you your petitions in the street. Come to the capital. I wish your enterprise today may thrive. What enterprise, Popilius? <laughs> Very well. What's that, Popilius, Lena? You wish today our enterprise might thrive. I fear our purpose is to discover it. Look how he makes to Caesar, mark him. Cass could be sudden, for we fear prevention. Brutus, what should be done? If this be known, Cassius or Caesar never shall turn back, for I will slay myself. Cassius, be constant. Papillus Lena speaks not of our purposes, for look, he smiles, and Caesar doth not change. Tell us Simba. Let him go and presently prefer his suit to Caesar. He is addressed. Press near and second him. Yes, go. You were the first that raised your hand. that Caesar and his Senate must redress. Most high, most mighty, and most puissant Caesar, Metella Simba throws before thy seat an humble heart. I must prevent thee, Simba. These couchings and these lowly courtesies might fire the blood of ordinary men and turn preordinance and first decree into the law of children. Be not fond to think that Caesar bears such rebel blood that will be thawed from the true quality with that which melteth fools. I mean sweet words. Low, crooked curtsies and base spaniel fawning. Thy brother by decree is banished. If thou dost bend and pray and fawn for him, I spurn thee like a cur out of my way. No, Caesar doth not wrong, nor without cause will he be satisfied. Is there no voice more worthy than my own to sound more sweetly in great Caesar's ear for the repealing of my banished brother? I kiss thy hand, but not in flattery, Caesar. Desiring thee that Publius Simba may have an immediate freedom of repeal. What? Brutus? Pardon, Caesar, Caesar, pardon. As low as to thy foot doth Cassius fall to beg enfranchisement for Publius Simba. I could be well moved if I were as you. If I could pray to move, prayers would move me. But I am constant as the northern star, of whose true fixed and resting quality there is no fellow in the firmament. The skies are painted with unnumbered sparks. They are all fire, and every one doth shine. But there's but one in all doth hold his place. So in the world, it is furnished well with men, and men are flesh and blood and apprehensive. Yet in the number I do know but one, that unassailable holds on his rank, unshaped of motion, and that I am he, let me a little show it, even in this, that I am constant Simba should be banished, and constant to remain to keep himself. So. Oh, Caesar! Hence, wilt thou lift up Olympus? Great Caesar! Doth not Brutus bootless kneel? Spear! Hands for me! Oh.
and fall. Caesar. Liberty! Freedom! Tyranny is dead! Run hence! Proclaim! Cry it about the streets! Some to the common pulpits and cry out, Liberty! Freedom and enfranchisement! People and senators, be not affrighted! That is paid. Go to the pulpit, Brutus. And Cassius, too. Stand fast together, lest some friend of Caesar. Lock out of standing. Publius, good cheer. There is no harm intended to your person, not on a Roman else. So tell them, Publius. And leave us, Publius, lest the people rushing on us to do your aid some harm. Do so. And let no man abide this deed. But we, the doers. Where is Antony? Fled to his house amazed. Men, wives, and children stare, cry out, and run as if it were doomsday. Stoop, Romans. Stoop. And let us bathe our hands in Caesar's blood. Then walk we forth even to the marketplace. And waving our red weapons o'er our heads, let's all cry peace, freedom, and liberty. Stoop then and wash. How many times shall Caesar bleed in sport that now on Pompey's basis lies along no worthier than the dust? So oft as that shall be, so often shall the knot of us be called the men who gave that country liberty. Well, shall we forth? Aye, every man away. Brutus shall lead, and we will grace his heels with the most boldest and best hearts of Rome. Soft, who comes here? Welcome, Mark Antony. Almighty Caesar, dost thou lie so low? Are all thy conquests, glories, triumphs, spoils, shrunk to this little measure? Fare thee well. I know not, gentlemen, what you intend. Who else must be let blood? Who else is rank? If I myself, there is no hour so fit as Caesar's death hour, nor no instrument of half that worth as those your swords made rich with the most noble blood of all this world. I do beseech ye, if you bear me hard now, whilst your purpled hands do reek and smoke, fulfill your pleasure. Live a thousand years, I shall not find myself so apt to die. No place will please me so, no mean of death is here by Caesar and by you cut off the choice and master spirits of the age. Go, oh, Antony, beg not your death of us, though now we must appear bloody and cruel, as by our hands, and this our present act you see we do. Yet see you but our hands, and this the bleeding business they have done. Our hearts you see not, they are pitiful. For your part, to you our swords have leaden points, Mark Antony. Your voice shall be as strong as any man's in the disposing of new dignities. Only be patient till we have appeased the multitude beside themselves with fear, and then we will deliver you the cause why I that did love Caesar when I struck him have thus proceeded. I doubt not of your wisdom. Let each man render me his bloody hand. The 
interest, Marcus Brutus, will I shake with you? Next, Caius Cassius, do I want to take your hand? Caesar, if thy spirit look upon us now, shall it not grieve thee dearer than thy death to see thy Antony making his peace, shaking the bloody fingers of thy foes, most noble in the presence of thy corpse? Mark Antony. Pardon me, Caius Cassius. Will you be pricked in number of our friends? Or shall we honor, not depend on you? Friends, am I with you all, and love you all. Upon this hope that you shall give me reasons why and wherein Caesar was dangerous. Or else this were a savage spectacle. Our reasons are so full of good regard that were you, Antony, the son of Caesar, you should be satisfied. That's all I seek. And am moreover suitor that I may produce his body in the marketplace and in the pulpit, as becomes a friend, speak in the order of his funeral. You shall, Mark Antony. Brutus, a word with you. You don't know what you do. Do not consent that Antony speak in his funeral. Oh, you know not how much the people may be moved by that which he will utter. By your pardon. I will myself into the pulpit first and show the reason of our Caesar's death. What Antony shall speak, I will protest he does by leave and by permission. And that we are contented Caesar shall have all true rites and lawful ceremonies. It will advantage more than do us wrong. I know not what may fall. I like it not. Mark Antony, here, take you Caesar's body. You shall not in your funeral speech blame us, but speak all good you can devise of Caesar and say you do it by our permission. Else shall you not have any hand at all about his funeral. And you shall speak in the same pulpit whereto I am going after my speech is ended. Be it so, I do desire no more. Prepare the body then and follow us. Oh, pardon me of earth, that I am meek and gentle with these butchers. Thou art the ruin of the noblest man that ever lived in the tide of times. Woe to the hand that shed this costly blood. Over thy wombs now do I prophesy. A curse shall light upon the limbs of men. Domestic fury and fierce civil strife shall cumber all the parts of Italy. Blood and destruction shall be so in use and dreadful objects so familiar that mothers shall but smile when they behold their infants quartered with the hand of war. Caesar's spirit ranging for revenge with Ate by his side, come hot from hell, shall in these confines with a monarch's voice cry havoc! And let slip the dogs of war. Caesar, do you know? I do, Mark Antony. Caesar did write for him to come to Rome. He did receive his letters and his coming, and bid me say to you by word of mouth. Oh, 
Oh, Caesar. Passion, I see, is catching. Is your master coming? He lies this night within seven leagues of Rome. Ah, here's a morning Rome. Dangerous Rome. No Rome of safety for Octavius yet. Right, Ensign, tell him so. Yet stay a while. Till I've borne this corpse into the marketplace. And tried there how the people take the cruel issue of these bloody men. They will be satisfied! And follow me! And give me audience, friends! Cassius, go you into the other street and part the numbers. Those that will hear me speak, let them stay here. And public reasons shall be rendered of Caesar's death. The noble Brutus is ascended! Silence! Be patient! To the last. Romans, countrymen, and lovers, hear me for my cause and be silent that you may hear. Believe me for mine honor and have respect for mine honor that you may believe. Censure me in your wisdom and awake your senses that you may the better judge. If there be any in this assembly, any dear friend of Caesar, to him I say that Brutus' love to Caesar was no less than his. If then that friend demand why Brutus rose against Caesar, this is my answer. Not that I loved Caesar less, but that I loved Rome more. Had you rather Caesar were living and die all slaves, or that Caesar were dead to live all free men? As Caesar loved me, I weep for him. As he was fortunate, I rejoice at it. As he was valiant, I honor him. But as he was ambitious, I slew him. There is tears for his love, joy for his fortune, honor for his valor, and death for his ambition. Who is here so base that would be a bondman? If any, speak, for him have I offended. Who is here so rude that would not be a Roman? If any, speak, for him have I offended. Who is here so vile that will not love his country? If any, speak, for him have I offended. I pause for a reply. None, Brutus! None! 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 none. 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 Then none have I offended. Here comes his body, mourned by Mark Antony, who, though he had no hand in Caesar's death, shall receive the benefit of his dying, a place in the commonwealth, as which of you shall not. With this I depart, that as I slew my best lover for the good of Rome, I have the same dagger for myself, when it shall please my country to need my death. Let's 
Augustus! Let him be Caesar! Caesar's better part shall be crowned in Brutus! We'll bring him to his house with shouts and clamor! My countrymen! Peace! Silence! Peace! Peace. Brutus speaks! Peace! Good countrymen, let me depart alone. And for my sake, stay here with Antony. Do grace to Caesar's corpse, and grace's speech tending to Caesar's glories, which Antony, by our permission, is allowed to make. I do entreat you, not a man depart, save I alone, till Antony have spoke. Stay home. We'll hear Mark Antony. We'll hear him. Noble Antony, go up. For Brutus' sake, I am beholden to you. What does he say of Brutus? He says for Brutus' sake, he finds himself beholding to us all. To a Does he speak no harm of Brutus here? This Caesar was a tyrant. That's certain. We have blessed that Romans rid of him. You gentle Roman. Peace. Let us hear him. Friends. Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. Uh, the good is often terred with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus have told you Caesar was ambitious. If it were so, it was a grievous fault. And grievously hath Caesar answered it. Here, under leave of Brutus and the rest, for Brutus is an honorable man, Why? so are they all, all honorable men. Come I to speak in Caesar's funeral. He was my friend, faithful and just to me. But Brutus says he was ambitious. And Brutus is an honorable man. He hath brought many captives home to Rome, whose ransoms did the general coffers fill. Did this in Caesar seem ambitious? When that the poor have cried, Caesar hath wept. Ambition should be made of sterner stuff. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious. And Brutus is an honorable man. You all did see that on the looper call, I thrice presented him a kingly crown which he did thrice refuse. Was this ambition? Yet Brutus says he was ambitious. And sure, he is an honorable man. I speak not to disprove what Brutus spoke, but here I am to speak what I do know. You all did love him once, not without cause. What cause withholds you then to mourn for him? Judgment, thou art fled to brutish beasts, and men have lost their reason. Bear with me. My heart is there with Caesar, and I must pause till it come back to me. Methinks there is much reason in his sayings. If thou consider rightly of the matter, Caesar has had a great wrong. Has he, masters? I fear there will a worse come in his place. Mark ye his words. He would not take the crown. Therefore, he certainly was not ambitious. There is not a nobler man in Rome than Antony. But yesterday, the word of Caesar might have stood against the world. Now lies he there, and none so poor to do him reverence. Oh, masters, if I were disposed to stir your hearts and minds to mutiny and rage, I should do Brutus wrong and Cassius wrong, who you all know are honorable men. I will not do them wrong. I'd rather choose to wrong the dead, to wrong myself and you, than I would wrong such honorable men. But here's a parchment with the seal of Caesar. I found it in his closet. It is his will. 
Let but the commons hear this testament, which, pardon me, I do not mean to read. And they would go and kiss dead Caesar's wounds and dip their napkins in his sacred blood. Yea, beg a hair of him for memory, and dying, mention it within their will. The world, the world, the world. I must not read it. It is not meet you know how Caesar loved you. You are not wood, you are not stones, but men. And being men, hearing the will of Caesar, it will inflame you, it will make you mad. Tis good you know not that you are his heirs. For if you should, oh, what would come of it? No, 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 no. Patience, will you stay a while? I have always shot myself to tell you of it. I fear I wrong the honorable men whose daggers have stabbed Caesar. I do fear it. They were traitors. Unmarked. You will compel me then to read the will. The will, the will, the will, the will. Then make a ring about the corpse of Caesar and let me show you him that made the will. Shall I descend? And will you give me leave? Come down. Stand far off. You all do know this mantle. I remember the first time ever Caesar put it on. It was on a summer's evening in his tent. That day he overcame the Nervii. Look, in this place ran Cassius Dagger through. Oh, see what a rent the envious Casca made. Through here, the well-beloved Brutus stabbed. <laughs> and as he plucked his cursed steel away, Marco, the blood of Caesar, followed it. For Brutus, as you know, was Caesar's angel. Judge, oh ye gods, how dearly Caesar loved him. Oh, this was the most unkindest cut of all. For when the noble Caesar saw him stab, Ingratitude, more strong than traitor's arms, quite vanquished him. Then burst his mighty heart, and in his mantle muffling up his face, even at the base of Pompey's statue, which all the while ran blood, great Caesar fell. Oh, what a fall was there, my countrymen. And I and you and all of us fell down, whilst bloody treason flourished over us! Kind soul, what? Weep you when you but behold our Caesar's vesture wounded. Look you here! Here is himself, marred as you see with traitors. Oh, pity a spectacle. Oh, noble Caesar! Traitors! Oh, most noble Caesar! Say, countrymen! Sweet friends! Sweet friends! Let me not stir you up to such a sudden flood of mutiny. They that have done this deed are honorable. What private griefs they have, alas, I know not, that made them do it. They are wise and honorable and will no doubt with reasons answer you. I come not, friends, to steal away your hearts. I am no orator, as Brutus is, but as you know me all, a plain, blunt man that loved my friend, and that they know full well that gave me public leave to speak of him. For I have neither wit, nor words, nor power of speech to stir men's blood. I only speak right on. I tell you that which you yourselves do know. Show you sweet Caesar's wounds, poor, poor, dumb mouths, and bid them speak for me. But were I Brutus and Brutus Antony, there were an Antony would ruffle up your spirits and put a tongue in every wound of Caesar's that should move the stones of Rome to rise and mutiny! Yeah. 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 Yet hear me, countrymen! Yeah. Yet hear me speak! Yeah. Why, friends, you go to do you know not what? Wherein hath Caesar thus deserved your love? Alas, you know not. I must tell you then. You have forgot the will I told you of. Here is the will. And under Caesar's seal, 
to every Roman citizen he gives, to every several man, 75 drachmas! Moreover, he hath left you all his walks, his private arbors and new planted orchards on this side Tiber. He hath left them you and to your heirs forever. Common pleasures to walk abroad and recreate yourselves. Here was a Caesar! When comes such another? Come away! There's body in the holy place! Come with a friend! Let's go out the traitor's houses! Mischief, thou art afoot. Take thou what course thou wilt. How now, fellow? Sir, Octavius has already come to Rome. Where is he now? He endeavored us at Caesar's house. He comes upon a wish. Fortune is merry, and in this mood will give us anything. I heard him say Brutus and Cassius are rid like madmen through the gates of Rome. They like they had some notice of the people. How I had moved them. Friends, ho! Comrades, to Brugus, to Cassius, burn all! Set the Theseus house and set the caskets! Many then shall die. The names are pricked. Your brother too must die. Consent you, Lepidus. I do consent. Prick him down, Antony. Upon condition, Publius shall not live. Who is your sister's son, Mark Antony? He shall not live. Look, with a spot I damn him. Brutus and Cassius are levying powers. We must straight make head. Therefore, let our alliance be combined, our best friends made, and our means stretched. And let us presently go sit in council. Let us do so. For well, we are at the stake, and bade about with many enemies. And some that smile have in their hearts, I fear, millions of mischiefs. Lepidus, do you fetch Caesar's will? We shall determine how to cut off some charge in legacies. How shall I find you here? Or here or at the capital. <coughs> this is a slight, unmeritable man, meet to be sent on errands. Is it fit the threefold world divided he should stand one of the three to share it? He's a tried and valiant soldier. So is my horse, Octavius. me, you gods, wrong I, mine enemies? And if not so, how should I wrong a brother? Before the eyes of both our armies here, which should perceive nothing but love from us, let us not wrangle. Brutus, this sober form hides wrongs. 
And when you do the... Cassius, be content. Speak your grief softly. I do know you well. Let no man come to our tent till we have done our conference. Let Lucilius and Titanius guard our door. That you have wronged me, it doth appear in this. You have condemned and noted Lucius Pella for taking bribes here of the Sardians. For in my letters, praying on his side because I knew the man was slighted off. You wronged yourself to write in such a case. In such a time as this, it is not meet that every nice offense should bear his comment. Let me tell you, Cassius, you yourself are much condemned to have an itching palm to sell and march your offices for gold to undeservers. I, an itching palm? You know that you are Brutus who speaks this, or by the gods, this speech where else you're last. The name of Cassius honors this corruption and chastisement that therefore hide his head. Chastisement? Remember March. The Ides of March, remember. Did not great Julius bleed for justice sake? What shall one of us that struck the foremost man of all this world contaminate our fingers with base bribes and sell the mighty space of our large honors for so much trash as may be grasped thus? I'd rather be a dog and bay the moon than such a Roman. Brutus, bait not me. I'll not endure it. You forget yourself to hedge me in. I'm a soldier, I. Older in practice, abler than yourself to make conditions. Go to, you are not. I am. I say you are not. Urge me no more. I shall forget myself. Have mind upon your health. Tempt me no farther. Away, slight man. Is possible? Hear me, for I will speak. Must I give way in room to your rash collar? Shall I be frighted when a madman stares? Oh, God, she gods, must I endure all this? All this I more. Fret till your proud heart break. Go show your slaves how choleric you are and make your bondmen tremble. Must I budge? Must I observe you? Must I stand and crouch under your testy humor? By the gods, you shall digest the venom of your spleen, though it do split you. For from this day forth, I'll use you for my mirth. Yea, my laughter when you are wasp. Is it come to this? You say you are a better soldier. Let it appear so. Make your vaunting true, and it shall please me well. For mine own part, I shall be glad to learn of noble men. You wrong me every way. You wrong me, Brutus. I said an elder soldier, not a better. Did I say better? If you did, I care not. When Caesar lived, he durst not thus have moved me. Peace, peace. You durst not so have tempted him. I durst not. No. What? Durst not tempt him? For your life, you durst not. Do not presume too much upon my love. I may do that, I shall be sorry for. You have done that, you should be sorry for. I did send to you for gold to pay my legions which you denied me. Was that done like Cassius? Should I have answered Caius Cassius so? When Marcus Brutus grows so covetous to lock such rascal counters from his friends, be ready, gods, with all your thunderbolts. Dash him to pieces! I denied you not. You did? I did not! He was but a fool that brought my answer back. Brutus hath bribed my heart. A friend should bear his friend's infirmities, but Brutus makes mine greater than they are. I do not till you practice them on me. You love me not. I do not like your faults. A friendly eye could never see such faults. A flatterers would not, though they do appear as huge as high Olympus. Oh, oh, come, Antony and young Octavius, come. Revenge yourselves alone on Cassius, for Cassius is a weary of the world. Hated by one he loves, braved by his brother, checked like a bondman, all his faults observed, set in a notebook, learned and conned by rope to cast into my teeth. Oh, I could weep my spirit from my eyes. There is my dagger. And here my naked breast. Within a heart, dearer than Pluto's mine, richer than gold. If that thou beast a Roman, take it forth. I that denied thee gold will give my heart. Strike as thou didst at Caesar. For I know when thou didst hate him worse, thou lovest him better than ever thou lovest Cassius. Sheathe thy dagger. Be angry when you will, it shall have scope. Oh, Cassius. You are yoked with a lamb that carries anger as the flint bears fire. 
who much enforced shows a hasty spark and straight is cold again. Cassius lived to be but mirth and laughter to his Brutus when grief and blood ill-tempered vexes him. When I spoke that, I was ill-tempered too. Do you confess so much? Give me a hand. And my heart too. Silius and Titinius, bid the commanders prepare to lodge their companies tonight. And come yourselves and bring Masala with you immediately to us. Lucius, a bowl of wine. I did not think you could have been so angry. No, oh, Cassius, I am sick of many griefs. Portia is dead. She is dead. How escaped I killing when I crossed you so? Oh, insupportable and touching loss. Upon what sickness? Impatient of my absence and grief that young Octavius and Mark Antony made themselves so strong. For with her death, that tidings came. With this, she fell distract and her attendants absent. Swallowed fire. And died so. Even so. Oh, ye mortal gods. Speak no more of her. Give me a bowl of wine. In this, I bury all unkindness, Cassius. My heart is thirsty for that noble pledge. Come in, Titinius. Welcome, good Masala. Now sit me close about this taper here and call and question our necessities. Portia, art thou gone? No more, I pray you. Masala. I have here received letters that young Octavius and Mark Antony come down upon us with a mighty power, bending their expedition toward Philippi. Myself have letters of the selfsame tenor. What do you think of marching to Philippi presently? I do not think it good. Your reason? It is better that the enemies seek us. So shall he waste his means, weary his soldiers, doing himself offense. Whilst we, lying still, are full of rest, defense, and nimbleness. Good reasons must of force give place to better. People twixt Philippi and this ground do stand but in a forced affection, for they have grudged us contribution. Hear me, good brother. Under your pardon, you must note beside that we have tried the utmost of our friends. Our legions are brimful, our cause is ripe. The enemy increaseth every day. We at the height are ready to decline. There is a tide in the affairs of men which taken at the flood leads on to fortune. Omitted, all the voyage of their life is bound in shallows and in miseries. On such a full sea are we now afloat. And we must take the current when it serves or lose our ventures. Then with your will go on. Wheel along ourselves and meet them at Philippi. The deep of night has crept upon our talk, and nature must obey necessity, which we will niggard with a little rest. There is no more to say? No more. Good night. Early tomorrow will we rise and hence. Lucius, my gown. Farewell, good Masala. Good night, Titanius. Noble, noble Cassius. Good night and good repose. Oh, my dear brother, this was an ill beginning of the night. Never come such division between our souls. But it not, Brutus. Everything is well. 
Good night, my lord. Good night, good brother. Good night, Lord Chris. Farewell, everyone. This taper burns. Who comes here? I think it is the weakness of mine eyes that shapes this monstrous apparition. It comes upon me. Art thou anything? Art thou some god, some angel, or some devil that makes my blood cold and my hair to stare? Speak to me what thou art. Thy evil spirit, Brutus. Why comest thou? To tell thee thou shalt see me at Philippi. Well, then I shall see thee again. I, I feel it, I. and upper regions. It proves not so. Their battles are at hand. They mean to warn us at Philippi here, answering before we do demand of them. I am in their bosoms, and I know wherefore they do it. They come down with fearful bravery, thinking by this to fasten in our thoughts that they have courage. But it is not so. Prepare, you generals! The enemy comes on in gallant show! Their bloody sign of battle is hung out, and something to be done immediately! Octavius, lead your legions softly on. Upon the left hand of the even field. Upon the right hand, I. Keep thou the left. Why do you cross me in this exigent? I do not cross you, but I will do so. Stand fast, Lucilius. We must out and talk.
Make fast. The generals would have some words. Stir out until the signal. Four blows. Is it so, countrymen? Not that we love words better, as you do. Good words are better than bad strokes, Octavius. With your bad strokes, Brutus, you gave good words. When your vile daggers hacked one another in the side of Caesar. You showed your teeth like apes and fawned like hounds and bowed like bondmen, kissing Caesar's feet. <laughs> you flatterers. Flatterers? Now, Brutus, thank yourself. This tongue had not offended so today, if Cassius might have ruled. Come, come, the cause. If arguing make us sweat, the proof of it will turn to redder drops. Look! I draw a sword against conspirators. When think you that the sword goes up again? Never! Till Caesar's three and thirty wounds be well avenged. Or till Octavius Caesar shall add his slaughter to the sword of traitors. Caesar, thou shalt not die by traitors' hands. So I hope. I was not born to die on Brutus' sword. Oh, if thou wert the noblest of thy strain, young man, thou couldst not die more honorable. A peevish schoolboy, worthless of such honor, joined with a masker and a reveler. <laughs> Called Cassius still. Defiance, traitor, tell we in your teeth. If you dare fight today, come to the field. If not, when you have stomachs. Come, Antony, away. Why now? Blow wind, swell below, and swim bark. The storm is up, and all is on the hazard. Now, most noble Brutus, the gods today stand friendly, that we may, lovers in peace, lead on our days to age. This same day must end the work the Ides of March begun. And whether we shall meet again, I know not. Therefore, our everlasting farewell take. Forever and forever farewell, Cassius. If we do meet again, why, we shall smile. If not, why, then this parting was well made. Forever and forever farewell, Brutus. If we do meet again, we'll smile indeed. If not, tis true, this parting was well made. Why, then, lead on. Oh, that a man might know the end of this day's business ere it come. But it sufficeth that the day will end, and then the end is known.
Be thou my witness, Masala, that against my will am I compelled to set upon one battle all our liberties. Coming from Sardis, on our forward ensign, two mighty eagles fell. And there they perched, gorging and feeding from our soldiers' hands. This morning are they fled away and gone. In their steads do ravens, crows, and kites fly over our heads. Down would look on us as we were sickly prey. And their shadows seem a canopy most fatal. Which our army lies ready to give up the ghost. Believe not so. <laughs> I but believe it partly. For I am fresh of spirit and resolved to meet all dangers very really constantly. Turning back, I slew the coward. Oh, Cassius Brutus gave the word too early. Having some advantage on Octavius took it too eagerly. His soldiers fell to spoil. Whilst we by Antony are all enclosed. Fly further off, my lord. Fly further off. Mark Antony's in your tents, my lord. This hill is far enough. Look, look, Catinius. Are those my tents where I perceive the fire? Catinius, if thou lovest me, mount thou my horse and hide thy spurs in him, that I may rest assured whether yon troops be friend or enemy. Go, Pindarus, get higher on the hill. My sight was ever thick. Regard, Titinius, and tell me what thou knowest about the field. This day I breathe it first. This is my best day. Time's come round. 
I did begin, there shall I end. My life is run his compass. Sirrah, what news? Tatinius is enclosed roundabout with horsemen that make to him on the spur. Yet he spurs on. Now they are almost on him. And hark, they shout for joy. Come down, behold no more. Oh, coward that I am to live so long to see my best friend tame before my face. Sir, come here, lad. In Parthia did I take thee prisoner, and then I swore thee, saving of thy life, that whatsoever I did bid thee do, thou shouldst attempt it. Come now, keep thy oath. Now be a freeman, and with this good sword that ran through Caesar's bowels, search this bosom. Stand not to answer. Take thou the hilts, and when my face is covered, as tis now, guide thou the sword. Caesar, thou art revenged. Even with the sword that killed. Julius Caesar, thou art mighty yet. Thy spirit walks abroad and turns our swords in our own proper entrails. The son of Rome is set. Our day is gone. Why didst thou bid me forth, brave Cassius? Did I not meet thy friends? And did they not put on my brows this wreath of victory and bid me give it thee? Didst thou not hear their shouts? The last of all the Romans, fare thee well. Friends, I owe more tears to this dead man than you shall see me pay. I shall find time, Cassius. I shall find time. It's too brutal. This is not Brutus, friend. Keep this man safe. list a word. What says, my lord? Why this, Volumnius? The ghost of Caesar hath appeared to me two several times by night. At Sardis once, and this last night here, in Philippi fields. I know my hour is come. Not so, my lord. Nay, I am sure it is, Volumnius. 
Thou seest the world, Volumnius, how it goes. Our enemies have beat us to the pit. It is more worthy to leap in ourselves than tarry till they push us. Good Volumnius, thou knowest that we two went to school together. Even for that, our love of old, I pray thee. Hold thou my sword hilt whilst I run on it. That's not an office for a friend, my lord. Fly, my lord! Fly! There's no towing here! Farewell to you, and you, Volumnius. Countrymen, my heart doth joy that yet in all my life I found no man but he was true to me. I shall have glory by this losing day, more than Octavius and Mark Antony, by this vile conquest shall attain unto. But fare you well at once, for Brutus' tongue hath almost ended his life's history. Night hangs upon mine eyes. My bones would rest that have but labored to attain this hour. Fly, my lord, fly. Hence I will follow. I prithee straight home. Stay thou by thy lord. Thou art a fellow of a good respect. Thy life hath had some smatch of honor in it. Hold thou my sword, and turn away thy face while I do run upon it. Wilt thou, Strato? Give me a hand first. Very well, my lord. Farewell, good Strato. Caesar, now be still. I killed not thee with half so good a will. What man is that? My master's man. Master. Free from the bondage you are in, my lord. Conquerors can but make a fire of him. For Brutus only overcame himself, and no man else hath honor by his death. How died he, Strato? I held the sword, and he did run on it. This was the noblest Roman of them all. All the conspirators, save only he, did that they did in envy of great Caesar. He only, in general honest thought of common good to all, made one of them. His life was gentle. The elements so mixed in him that nature might stand up and say to all the world, this was a man.